Happy 4th of July weekend, everyone. Every week on the weekend, I like to try to round up the news from the week since the quantum computing space is changing so quickly and there's always news. So we're gonna look all the way back to Monday of this week and just take a look at what has happened. Quantum companies, especially the pure play companies, have a fairly bullish setup. So at the end of this episode, I'd like to add some quick chart analysis for Seal SQ LAES, Qubits, D-Wave, Rigetti, RGTI, and Ion Q. We've got a lot to cover and we're gonna do this as efficiently as possible. Let's jump right in. So the European Investment Fund invested 30 million in quantum technologies and deep physics. This article is from June 30th, 2025. The European Investment Fund is investing 30 million in Quantonation 2 to strengthen early stage financing for quantum and deep physics startups. The quantum computing sector is still in its infancy with no established standards and an ongoing competition to define a global center of excellence that could be based in Europe. We actually saw a lot of headlines from Europe this weekend, and I'll show you all of those as we kind of move through this. Investing in Quantination 2 allows us to support European companies at the forefront of quantum technology. By backing this fund, we are reinforcing our commitment to strengthening Europe's technological sovereignty and nurturing high potential sectors that require specialized expertise. EU is pressing for quantum safe encryption by 2030 as risks grow. So this was just a couple of days before the 4th of July, July 1st. The European Union has called on member states to transition to quantum safe encryption by 2030, citing urgent cybersecurity risk posed by future quantum computers. The EU plan promotes post-quantum cryptography, PQC, for most sectors and explores quantum key distribution for high security applications, outlining a phased roadmap that begins in 2026 with risk assessments and awareness campaigns. Last week, we saw that Canada has a similar plan for post-quantum cryptography and a post-quantum world. The European Union urged its member states to adopt quantum-safe encryption methods by the end of the decade, warning that current encryption standards could soon be outdated in the face of rapid advances in quantum computing. We also saw just a couple weeks ago, the G7 agreed on a broader quantum strategy. I'm gonna put that thumbnail up on the screen. The push comes amid growing concern about the long-term viability of conventional encryption techniques. Currently, security protocols rely on complex math problems, such as factoring large numbers that would take today's classical computers thousands of years to solve. But quantum computers could potentially crack these systems in a fraction of the time, opening the door to what cybersecurity experts refer to as store now, decrypt later. So Europe was in the headlines a lot th this week. A commission launches strategy to make Europe a quantum leader by 2030. The European Commission has launched the quantum strategy to establish Europe as a global quantum leader by 2030 through investments in research infrastructure and industrialization. It aims to boost Europe's global funding share in quantum startups, support dual use innovation, and prepare for a forthcoming Quantum Act proposal. So I did open up the quantum Europe strategy and there's a, a download here, but basically what it says is the strategy focuses on five areas. Research and innovation, consolidating excellence across Europe to lead in quantum. Quantum infrastructures, developing scalable coordinated infrastructure hubs to support production design and applications. Strengthening the quantum ecosystem through investments in startups and scale-ups, securing supply chains and the industrialization of quantum technologies space and dual use quantum technologies, security and defense, integrating secure sovereign quantum capabilities into Europe's space and quantum skills, building a diverse world-class workforce through coordinated education, training and talent. So Europe is getting very aggressive with their quantum readiness. We saw on July 1st, one of the quantum pure play companies, D-Wave, who builds quantum annealing machines successfully completed 400 million at the market offering, which increased their cash position to $815 million. I'm gonna put that thumbnail on the screen if you'd like to learn more about that. Some quick highlights. Today they have announced they've successfully completed the sale of 400 million in gross proceeds of its common stock pursuant to its previously disclosed 400 million. 
the company's proceeds from this offering bring the company's current cash balance to approximately $815 million. And just my two cents on that, two quarters ago, they had less than 100 million. So they've at least made a 10X in their cash position for acquisitions, hiring, research, whatever they wanna use that for, their cash position is much stronger than it was six months ago. Very interesting article here that we just got a few days ago. Quantum AI and space are anchoring the Pentagon's deep tech convergence strategy. I like the uh, the artwork here. Um, the Quantum Insider does a great job. I've I reached out to Matt and we, we actually email sometimes. Uh, Matt's a cool guy. They do an amazing job covering this space and make it a lot easier for me to stay in tune with everything that's going on. The insider brief, the Pentagon's $179 billion budget signals a strategic shift toward integrating quantum technology, AI, and space systems as foundational elements of the US defense capability. Quantum related programs, while fragmented and often classified, are gaining ground through cross service initiatives in sensing, encryption, navigation, with convergence visible in satellite and space based applications. So we'll take a look at the actual budget, but quantum related programs are kind of scattered now more in the budget and it's hard to see just one line item because they're starting to pepper quantum in in many different ways which is really cool to see really history unfolding right in front of us quantum's quiet rise in the defense stack the most visible quantum program is the quantum application line item We'll look at that, a program that crosses all the service branches and points towards rising activity and transitioning quantum concepts into real world military use. Post-quantum cryptography, which ensures secure communications against future quantum computers capable of breaking encryption, is addressed in classified and cyber defense lines under Army and Defense wide cyber modernization efforts. The convergence between AI, quantum, and space becomes more obvious and seamless. Quantum sensors and AI-guided data analysis will likely be embedded into next-gen satellites and space-based early warning systems. AI is no longer its own program, but is embedded across air, land, sea, cyber, and space. Quantum is not a niche, rather it is spreading across sensing, timing, encryption, and communication. And that's one thing about quantum is it's not just the quantum computer. It's quantum mechanics, it's sensing. It's what you can do with the computational ability, but what you can do with sensing, the quantum internet. There's a lot we can do the more we understand this technology. So pretty fascinating. So just looking at the actual budget. So what I want you all to look at is the FY 2024 actual of 19.268. And that has tripled to 59.521. So definitely a big increase in quantum applications and quantum spending. And earlier this week, IonQ engaged with Texas policymakers and research institutes. The Texas Quantum Initiative is more than just policy. It's a platform for transformative innovation, secure infrastructure, and inclusive workforce development. We commend Governor Abbott and the Texas legislature for taking bold steps to secure Texas's place in the, quant the global quantum economy. Quantum technology is no longer a distant idea, it's quickly becoming a reality, influencing national security, manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, climate science, and critical infrastructure. Very cool to see, lots of news this week. So we just, we're wrapping up the news part of this and we're gonna go into a few charts. So D-Wave has four consecutive days of green candles. Let's take a look at the day. All right, so we're looking at D-Wave's chart and D-Wave was selling off a lot during this ATM, which was approximately during this downtrend in this channel. Now they've broken this channel and they've had some consecutive days of some pretty bullish price action. So they're kind of in the middle of this 15 to 18 channel. And it does look like historically 15 has come into play for support. So we could see that if market opens red, maybe D-Wave retests that support. And if things are very bullish, what we really wanna see 
is D-Wave push into 1813. And the reason that I'm giving 1813 as a number here is because we have very little price history above 1813. And if we can get into 1813, then we're on the doorstep of all time highs, which is this 1979 and D-Wave could potentially push through if they have some catalysts or news. Maybe we see something new from D-Wave this week. They've been a little bit quiet in their press releases, so let's see what we get this week from them. LAES, I know a lot of you all who follow the channel are big fans of this quantum cybersecurity company. So we just covered eight or nine pieces of news, and almost all of them were talking about quantum cybersecurity, post-quantum, safe. Well, Seal SQ, LAES, is one of the, the only companies in the market that's dedicated to this space. And right now it's trading under $4 a share. If I bring back some drawings here, we can see that it has been in a bullish uptrend. It's held above some supports. It's hit the, it's bounced off this rising support a couple of times. It's in this bullish wedge. And could we see some sort of breakout from Seal SQ. I think a lot of these quantum stocks are setting up to potentially have some bullish momentum to the upside. I'm back on D-Wave's chart because I could easily see something similar happening with D-Wave. But LAES has been in this narrowing bullish channel where it's making higher highs and higher lows. And it's right there on rising support. So could we see LAS open bullish. We'll see. Rigetti, Rigetti Spaghetti. So Rigetti has quite a bit of price history now for us above $7 and below $15. So Rigetti got the price upgrade from Cantor Fitzgerald to a $15 price target, which seems attainable. And one thing that's really interesting with Rigetti is if we just kind of look at where it's this kind of rectangle that I'm drawing on the screen, there's not a whole lot of price history once we get into like that 13 and above. If it breaks in, if it breaks above 15, then we only have a few trading days where Rigetti was even up in that zone. So if Rigetti can break above 15, then I could see it using 15 as support and potentially retesting all time highs. I released my price target on Rigetti. If macro and everything holds up, I'm looking for 25 on the stock. All right, and last one is IonQ. So IonQ is one of the most bullish setups in all of quantum stocks. I saved the best for last. Look at this chart. Look at what's happening. It's You don't even need to see lines on this chart. You can just kind of see where things are going. So at the lows here with the tariffs, look at the verticality on that slope and that rising support that has been validated over and over and over again. And we closed off of rising support. We're in the middle of the RSI because we had a little bit of a red day. So we're kind of coiled up in this bull flag, this 30 something percent day. And we're kind of, we're just, Ion Q is looking to potentially make a move. It's possible that they could break this 4868 level and then the next stop would be all-time highs now my price target i'll put this on the screen is 100 for ion q and i think they could hit that by the end of the year so i think that if everything goes according to plan they break this all-time high sooner rather than later and the bid keeps going up for this company especially if they can give us a strong earnings or keep it up with these partnerships and the roadmap. All right, guys, so we just covered a ton of news. We covered a bunch of quantum stocks. A lot of them are looking really bullish. Yesterday, for the very first time, I announced channel memberships. And I have made over 180 videos and never advertised anything. I've been contacted to have sponsorships. I, I haven't done it. I've said no. I'll, I even take that a step further because I don't like being advertised to. Someone made a comment on one of my videos. They said, I love this content, but there's just, there's too many ads. So as a newer 
YouTuber and, and that type of thing, I decided at that moment right then that I wasn't going to have mid-roll ads, which are ads that run in the middle of content because I would rather you all have a better experience with the content. So when you view a video of mine, it's uninterrupted from start to finish. If you would like to support my channel and you would like to support me, the Quantum Bull, the Golden Bull, and Diamond Bull, I would love to see you over there. Here's some information and hope you guys do well in the market tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon.